Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to another session of marketing management part 1. We are in third module of this course that is capturing market insight. This is uh, lecture 4 of the week 3rd in this course and we have started discussing about marketing research process uh, after discussing the different components of marketing information system we are discussing about marketing research. As you have seen uh, the marketing research is an objective and systematic process. It is systematic because uh, it is performed in a sequential or uh, in ordered manner. It is starts with the, uh, the determination or the identification of the informi information needed. Then you collect the information which is required for answering uh, the information. Once you collect it, then you analyze it and then you disseminate it. You provide it to your decision makers in the form that is understandable to them and then that information is applied. Uh, for uh, achieving the desirable uh, objectives of that marketing research project. And this is basically to improve marketing decision making process related to identification and solution of problems and opportunities in the marketing. So, we have looked into the different uh, steps of marketing research process. Marketing research process starts with uh, the management decision problem which is followed by marketing research problem and objectives of the research project. Then you develop your research plan which is followed by the collection of uh, information, uh, analysis of the information, analysis of the, uh, the data being collected and then reporting the findings for the input to marketing managers or to the decision makers. Today I am going to talk about uh, this uh, in detail about management decision problem and marketing research problem. So, management decision problem is the, the problem facing uh, the decision maker for which the research is intended to provide answers or information. So, basically you understand there is a decision making situation. Uh, the managers, marketing managers or the top management of a firm is standing at a particular point of time where they have to act on something which is happening around their business in the market and uh, related with the uh, other environmental factors. So, this is a basically a decision making situation. Now, corresponding to this decision making situation, how do you determine what is the marketing uh, uh, this management decision problem? So, problem definition process uh, includes some of these steps like a discussion with decision makers, you interact with decision makers, you understand uh, what is the context of the problem how you have reached to that problem situation. So, understanding the historical perspective of that problem is very critical. Then you also understand uh, what is their take on uh, that problem, what could be the possible reasons for that uh, decision making situation, uh, what are the different alternatives which are available with them. Uh, also you uh, indulge in probably uh, indulge in uh, discussion with the interviews with the expert or you, you basically um, talk to the expert in that area and try to understand what could be the possible alternatives to that decision making situation, what could be the, uh, the factors that are uh, underplaying the uh, an important role in that decision making situation. Besides this uh, discussion with the interviewers and the, inter uh, the interviews with expert, you also look into the secondary data analysis. Sometimes it is very, very uh, useful and uh, you should look into the existing literature or uh, uh, probably you, you can look on the web or uh, you can look into the different sources of the, um, um, the problems which can help you in understanding and determining the overall management decision problem. Then uh, you can also employ the qualitative research uh, to explore uh, what is the problem, to understand the problem, to sharpen your problem and also probably uh, clarify what could be the possible alternatives. So, all these four types of uh, things can help you in creating a more precise management decision problem or as a researcher it will give you a better understanding of what is the management decision problem 
and what is the further course of action. Uh, now, uh, I talk about uh, management decision problem with respect to marketing decision problem. Here you will see that uh, the decision problem, marketing uh, management decision problem is about what marketing managers need to do. So, that means it is action oriented. On the other side, when we have to decide corresponding to that management decision problem, what is a marketing research problem, the marketing research problem will be focused upon what marketing managers need to know to solve that problem and how the information to be obtained. So, it is an information oriented thing or it is an information to, per, to be performed. I will give you an example here. Uh, there is a departmental store, uh, I call it as Kirana retail chain. Now, this retail chain uh, management is, uh, they, they are seeing that uh, they are losing the market share. Uh, what could be the possible alternatives for arresting this uh, loss of market share? So, the, uh, the possible uh, um, ways or po possible alternatives for uh, resolving this management decision problem of uh, arresting the uh, uh, this loss of market share could be modify existing products, uh, product lines. Uh, you can also introduce new product. You can change the marketing mix, you can change the, if you understand there is a problem with the positioning or the positioning is not uh, relevant with the current times, you can uh, change or uh, relaunch the product or reposition the product. And then uh, also you can, the one other alternative could be that uh, segment the market in a different way. So, that could also help you in this situation in arresting your, uh, your market loss uh, thing. Now, corresponding to the marketing research problem, you will uh, understand that uh, there are some of the important things one has to understand is that uh, decision maker and its environment, uh, you need to understand if manager is uh, standing at a particular uh, point of time in, in a decision making situation, what is its environment, uh, competitive environment, its external environment, the various other factors that affect that decision making situation. Then as I have already talked about, what are the alternative courses of action? Important thing, uh, the consequences of alternative actions. So, if you exercise one particular alternative, what could be the outcome of uh, that uh, uh, thing? Because each uh, exercising any of these alternative will have its um, share of resource uh, uh, requirement and also it will lead to a particular kind of market consequence. So, you need to basically predetermine or uh, assess that also and then objective of the decision maker. So, with respect to the objectives of the decision maker, what, what kind of outcome these different alternatives will generate that is also needs to be understand, that needs to be understood. Uh, generally what happens is uh, there are two types of mistakes people do in uh, creation of this marketing research problem statement or when they state marketing research problem. Uh, they either uh, define the marketing research problem in a uh, very broad way or they basically define the marketing research problem in a very narrow way. However, the marketing research problem should have uh, two components that uh, are two parts which is broad statement that should help you in understanding uh, what, is, uh, uh, what is the overall uh, problem that you are trying to address and corresponding to that problem what are the di different uh, objectives or what are the different components of that problem that you need to uh, resolve or you need to answer so that you can uh, collectively by answering those components, you can answer the broad, broad statement. So, here again I give you an example, uh, there is a retail outlet uh, Kirana which is basically facing this problem of uh, that their store patronage is going down. The researcher when conducted the interviews with the de key decision makers, he have found out that uh, the, the, the decision makers are uh, seeing the decline in their sales and they attribute that to the store patronage. But uh, when the researcher asked these uh, decision makers, uh, how do you know, I mean why this, uh, this store patronage is going down, they do not have the answer. So, that is what they are uh, asking researcher to answer here. Corresponding to this management decision problem of uh, uh, to improve the store patronage for this uh, retail chain Kirana, they, they, there is a basically marketing research problem. The broad statement here would be determine the relative strength and weakness of Kirana 
vis-a-vis -vis other major competitors with respect to factors that influence store patronage. So, this is the broad statement. To resolve that uh, store patronage issue, you have to understand the position of this Kirana with respect to its, uh, with respect to its competitor on important attributes, the factors which affect the store patronage. So, corresponding to this broad statement, you have a uh, components of this research problem, marketing research problem. The first component I have written here is what criteria do the decision maker in the household employ to choose department store. So, what are the factors basically, the critical factors that determine the choice of a customers of a particular store. So, those are the important factors. Now, here the literature review could be of a very critical use or could be of a very important use or could be very helpful in already understanding because there has been so much of a research which has already gone in understanding this store patronage part. Then the next uh, statement related with this uh, marketing research problem could be Kirana versus uh, uh, vis a vis uh, competing store on important criteria. So, uh, one part is that you understand the critical factors, the second part is how on those critical factor, this uh, retail chain Kirana fares with respect to its competitor. Then the third part is, which store are patronized for a specific product category. So, within that, uh, that um, uh, this Kirana stores market, you might have a different segments and you will see that a different segment of the customers are probably uh, for a specific product category, customer choose a particular type of uh, uh, store. So, that also you need to understand then you the further uh, questions could be like uh, do the does the profile of um, uh, Kirana's um, customers differ from the profile of the its competitors market share for Kirana store on a specific product category vis a vis its competitors. These are the things uh, the, as a specific uh, part of that uh, marketing research problem that you need to frame and then you can uh, work with each of these different. Uh, specific components. When you start working with these components, uh, each component can lead you to basically um, different types of research questions actually. So, corresponding to each of these components, uh, you can have a different research questions. Research questions are refined statements of a specific components of the problem. So, you are dealing with a specific components and you have a uh, different uh, refined statements that can help you in answering that research questions. I uh, will I'll, I'll explain to you these things in the next slide and corresponding to those research questions, you can build your research hypothesis. Re research hypothesis are testable statements that basically talks about uh, the connections between the variables or the factors or the phenomena that researcher is interested in. If you, I will continue with the example of this Kirana retail chain. Uh, here the management decision problem was what should be done to improve store patronage for Kirana. Corresponding to that, you have a broad uh, marketing research problem that uh, determine the relative strength and weakness of Kirana vis a vis other major competitors. Now, you understand one of the uh, specific component of this marketing research problem was uh, the profile of the um, uh, the customers with respect of Kirana with, with respect to its competitor. So, now you analyze to understand the analyze of the customer profile of Kirana vis a vis its competitor, you can have a different research questions and the corresponding di different research hypothesis for answering that uh, specific components. So, to answer about the profile of the on what factors the Kirana stores customers differ from its competitors, do the customers of uh, Kirana stores exhibit store loyalty or they heavy users of credit and you will see that uh, you will you can build corresponding hypothesis with respect to them, customers who are, who, customers who are loyal or of higher age, uh, customers who are uh, loyal to basically Kirana are of higher age, then customers who are loyal once more they are they belongs to higher income group. Similarly, you can build the hypothesis and you will see that when you are uh, proceeding in this marketing research process, 
that corresponding to a management decision problem here, you may come out with more than one marketing research problem or you may work on more than one alternatives and corresponding to that problem, you may have more than uh, one specific components in the form of uh, research objective 1, research objective 2. Then you see that for each research objective or a specific components, you can have more than one research question to answer that research objectives and you will build basically, you can build more than one uh, research hypothesis to answer that research question corresponding to each of these hypotheses. Uh, you have to have a research design to answer or test those hypotheses. In that, you collect the information and test what uh, what is stated in that hypothesis. So, we will talk further about this research design part. Research, de research, uh, research design is a framework or blueprint for conducting the marketing research project. It details the procedures necessary for obtaining the information needed to structure or solve marketing research problem. So, once you have reached up to the hypothesis stage, that means uh, you have worked on the problem part properly. Now, the thing is that once you have stated your hypothesis, you will need certain information to test that hypothesis. To test that info, uh, to test that uh, hypothesis, you collect the data and the blueprint of the rest of the pro process of collecting the data and collecting the information uh, and analyzing it test that hypothesis become the part of the research design. This research design can be of broadly two types, exploratory research design and conclusive research design. And then in the conclusive research design again, you have two parts descriptive research and causal research. Descriptive research can further be classified in cross sectional design and longitudinal design. I will take one each one of them one by one. So, I, st I start with uh, exploratory research design. In exploratory research design, uh, as, as the word explain itself, it is about exploration. So, you explore, it is not, uh, it can answer you questions like why, how and uh, when kind of thing, but it will not tell you about the how many times or the, those kind of questions. So, it, it is about exploration of uh, the problem further or uh, sharpening your problem further, when you want to understand your uh, marketing research problem further, the exploratory research design can come into the picture or it can be useful. Uh, there are many qualitative research techniques which are employed here to help you with this exploration part. Then you have the conclusive research design. In the conclusive research design, we try to ascertain the, we try to uh, conclusively say what is the exact nature of the relationship and this conclusive research design has two parts causal research. Causal research is concerned the investigation of uh, uh, exam or the in examination of the relationship, the causal relationship between two variables. So, by controlling the extra effect of uh, external variables uh, in the experimental design, you ascertain whether there is a causal relationship between two variables. And however, you will see that uh, the causal research can only tell you whether uh, x is one of the possible cause of y, but if I ask you what is the exact nature of relationship, how x is related to y, that answer I will not get and for that I have to use this uh, descriptive research which, which tells you the exact uh, uh, relationship between the variables and uh, the, the re descriptive research is classified in two types of research design that is cross sectional design and the longitudinal design. So, cross sectional design is that if you research at a particular point of time uh, that at t equal to t naught if you study a uh, problem, then it is a basically a cross sectional design. However, if you study a problem at time t equal to t 1 and then again you study it at time t equal to t 2. So, you see that you are studying over the period of time that is longitudinal design. There is something more into it that when we talk about research design that is the nature of the data. Data can again be classified in two types, uh, primary data and the secondary data. Uh, many a times uh, you will find out that uh, your secondary data can be very helpful. Secondary data is something which, which has been collected for some other uh, uh, problem or some other related issue, but it can also be useful for you. So, 
this uh, sales reports might be developed to analyze the profitability or uh, overall well being, but it the sales data can also give you the information about some of the things that we were discussing uh, uh, earlier in this session like uh, that you can also understand that uh, possibly it can tell you that store patronage is going down because sales from your loyal customers is going down the the number of time they are coming back to you is going down so the secondary data uh, could be of two types it could be internal it could be external uh, internal data is something which lies within the firm and uh, it can again be of two types it could be ready to use uh, it is something which is uh, for this purpose only or uh, it is in the ready to use form or uh, it could be in the form of something uh, that you can further process and uh, infer uh, that data and uh, analyze the data to answer the what you are the, the issue under hand. Then you can have the external uh, secondary data that you can procure from outside the organization. So, there is a published material lot of literature is uh, available, academic research is available. Uh, we have talked about the different databases uh, uh, where you can get the uh, lot of literature about any concerned topic. Then uh, you have uh, computerized uh, databases or the uh, syndicated services are also available these days, which can give you the data about uh, different markets, uh, uh, different brands or uh, in a particular industry sector. Uh, the, the overall picture of that industry sector. However, uh, some of these services are paid. Uh, then we talk about the primary data. The primary data is uh, mainly collected for the, uh, the problem or the research issue which is in hand. So, you, you basically employ survey based research or you conduct uh, in depth interviews for a particular problem. So, these could be the primary uh, sources of the data. And this data classification is something which is very important for you to understand. Uh, with this, I conclude this session here, and when we'll meet in the next section, we uh, when we'll meet in the next session, we will start uh, from here onwards. Thank you very much.